by the time you get, you know, we, we sometimes get a prep script in the first or second class from the editor, from the editors, but by the time a final script is set, you are likely in the studio within a week's time, um, just so that they have enough time to do post production on the audiobook so that then they can get it out to release it simultaneously with the, with the cookbook. Um, but I read the book and I, I basically, the way I describe it is I read the book in two ways. I read it one time, but I'm reading it in two ways. I'm reading it forensically, which means that I'm taking notes on like, how do I pronounce that word? Or I'm gonna need to learn this accent because, you know, this character is described as having, you know, a very gruff or gravelly voice, which means I'm gonna have to get extra rests and do extra warm ups in order to be able to sustain this for six or eight or 10 or 12 or 15 hours in the studio. Um, so the forensic read is for information. But then I'm also trying to read the book kind of experientially, which is like, what is the experience of the reader? Oh, is my heart racing right now? Oh, am I super intrigued by that character? Who is that a mystery that I need to make sure I just kind of, you know, lift that up a little bit for the listener? <clears throat> so that, because my job is to make sure that the listener of the audiobook has the same experience I had when I read the book, right? That like, I'm, I'm transparent, you know, you, you should be able to see right through me um, to be able to get to the book. I, I shouldn't get in the way of it. Um, so to sort of keep the integrity of the experience of reading the book, um, that's my goal for the listener. So that's how I think. Well, thanks for sharing that. Um, do you have any interaction with the authors of the books as you're preparing and, and recording the audio? Yeah, so there, there's a little bit of a double-edged sword there. Um, I can say that one of the great thrills of being an audiobook narrator is that I get to meet authors and I get to interact with them. Um, I used to do a lot of that on an app called Twitter anymore for various reasons. Um, it's not as much of a fun place as it used to be. Um, but uh, getting to chat with authors, because to me, you know, I'm a reader, authors are rock stars, it's just the most exciting thing. Um, but there is a level of kind of be available for their input, but after a certain point, the author has to just trust us and let us do their thing because when you think about, like, well, I come from a theater background, when you think about a play, right, a, a play on a very long end is going to be three hours long, right? So even if, in a worst case scenario where a playwright wants to get feedback on it, every single line that gets said, you're talking about 90 minutes two hours, two and a half hours of material. If I'm doing a 15 hour book, which for me would take about five studio days, studio day 10 to five in the day, reading all day. The idea that an author would want to weigh in and be like, oh, can you do it this way? Can you say it this way? Oh, what I meant was this. It's, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a quagmire that we don't want to get into. Right? Mm -hmm. So being able to give and receive, um, to, to be able to ask questions and Limited feedback before the process begins is ideal. Um, if there's anything that's unclear to me, or you know, I, I have kind of two ideas about this, or you're looking at this a lot, but ultimately, um, the, the audiobook really is in our hands, our meaning the audiobook production team and the artists that put it together. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's kind of a, there's kind of an interesting tension there, but, um, but it's, ultimately, it's just so cool to be able to meet authors. I, I take a point of it anytime an author's coming through Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, it must be interesting to receive that feedback um, and hear how the authors are experiencing your audio narration. Um, do you get messages from listeners uh, about your about um, how they've experienced your work? Yes, and thank goodness they do because <laughs> sitting in a approved room seven hours a day. Talking to yourself, and then knowing, trusting that it goes out in the world, and maybe somebody listens to it, uh, responds to it. So it's incredibly lovely, um, and I do hear pretty frequently from from uh, from listeners, which is um, very different than going online and reading reviews, mm -hmm. which I do not do, mm -hmm. uh, and I believe no creative person should. <laughs> That's true, uh, because it's. Uh, you know, it's an outlet for people to, to, to work out to work on other things in their lives, not necessarily what they're doing about other people's art they just 